Often with data, it's not sufficient just to know where the center of the data is. We want to know how spread out the data is around that center. So that's where we take a look at measures of center. And the most basic measure of center is what's called a range. The range finds the difference between the largest and smallest values of a distribution. So for example, if I have 2, 4, 5, 7, and 11, and we wanted to know the range, we would take the largest value and the smallest value and just subtract them. 11 minus 2 is 9. And so we can see there is a range of nine different values throughout this data set. The problem with the range is it's dependent just on two data values. And if there's an outlier, a value far removed from the rest of the data, the range can become severely skewed. This is why we're usually more interested in the standard deviation, which officially is a measure of the spread around an expected value. An unofficial definition that I like is you could think about it as the average distance the data values are from the mean. How spread out is everything around the mean? If we're talking about a sample, the way we calculate the sample standard deviation, represented by lowercase s, is we take the square root of the sum of the square of the differences between each data value in the mean divided by the sample size minus 1. And we'll walk through this equation here in just a minute. If it's a population, however, we use the lowercase Greek letter sigma to represent the standard deviation. And this alters the formula less slightly. If we're talking about a population, we only divide by n, not n minus 1. OK, let's look at an example. If this was a sample, a very small sample of 8, 10, and 12, the first thing I'd want to do to calculate the standard deviation is find the mean so we could see how spread out everything is from the mean. We know we calculate the mean by adding the values together. That gives us 30. And then we divide by the number of data values, which is 3. 30 divided by 3 is 10. And so our mean, since this is a sample, x bar is 10. What I'll do then is I'll work through our formula for the standard deviation, which is the square root of the sum of all the data values minus the mean squared divided by the n minus 1. So first, starting order of operations inside the parentheses, the x's represent all the data values, 8, 10, and 12. In parentheses, though, we need to subtract x minus the mean of 10. So 8 minus 10 gives us negative 2. 10 minus 10 is 0. And 12 minus 10 is 2. Following the formula, the next thing we need to do is square all those data values. Find what x minus x bar squared is. Well, negative 2 squared is a positive 4. 0 squared is 0, and 2 squared is 4. Next, we see the sum in that numerator. The sum means we're going to add all those together so that we can find the sum of the x minus x bars squared. 4 plus 0 plus 4, here is 8. So that means in our numerator, we know the sum of x minus x bar squared is 8 divided by n minus 1. n is the sample size. We only have 3 here. So 3 minus 1 is 2. 8 halves reduces to 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So the standard deviation of these three numbers is 2. Or on average, each point is about 2 from the mean. The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is going to be. The smaller standard deviation, the closer all the numbers are going to be to our mean. Now, Excel can calculate the standard deviation also. You can do all the columns with the formulas. Or there's two formulas we can call up in Excel, stdev.s for the standard deviation of a sample, or .p for the standard deviation of a population, and then selecting the data. Let's look at an example. Here we have our 20 data values ranging in numbers from about 5 to about 15. These individual data values are our x's. 
First, I'm going to show how we can use Excel to walk through the steps, and then we'll use Excel to take the actual shortcut. So the formula starts with x minus x bar, which means first we need to know the mean. So let's just calculate it down here at the bottom. Mean equals average of all of our data values is 10.65. So I'm going to say equals, click my data value, and subtract 10.65. Grabbing that dot and dragging it down gives us all of the x minus x bars. Next, we have to do x minus x bar squared. To square the data value, I'll hit equals, select the box. By hitting shift 6, we get a caret to represent an exponent, squared, and enter. Grab that bottom corner and stretch it down, and that gives me all the x minus x bar squared. The formula says it wants the sum of all of those, so we'll say equals the sum, open a parentheses, and select all those data values that we want to add, and we find the sum is 138.58. Now, the standard deviation is the square root of that divided by 1 less than the sample size. So we'll say equals SQRT for square root. I'll click that number, and we'll divide by 1 less than the sample size. I have 20 data values, so 1 less than that is 19. And when I hit Enter, we get the standard deviation of our sample. Now, I could have found that standard deviation by just hitting equals stdev.s for sample, open a parentheses, and select all my original data. When I hit Enter, you see it gives me the exact same value. If this was a population, not a sample, we could say equals stdev.p and select all of our data values. And when we hit Enter, if it was a population, that would be sigma, we get 2.63. Usually very close, but not quite exactly the same as our s. There's one more measure of spread that's called the variance. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's very closely related to the standard deviation. The variance is the square of the standard deviation, or what we would have gotten before we actually took that square root step. So s squared is the variance for a sample, and sigma squared is the variance for a population. That's pretty straightforward, so we won't spend much time on it here. I'll let you practice it on the assignment. So hopefully you found this video helpful as you calculate various measures of variation to see how spread out the data is around its center.